Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here at Activate Learn on Twitter. It is time for another book review and my apologies, it has been a while, but I have uh, finished this book called The Memory Palace by Hari Kunzru. Hopefully I've said his name right. Now this is a library book as you can see and I picked it out of the, my local library simply because it piqued my curiosity. Number one, I really like the name of the uh, the book, given that I had just read, read Susanna Clarke's Piranesi. In my head, I had these visions of something magical, fantastic uh, places. So the memory palace kind of intrigued me because I didn't know what a memory palace is. The other thing, when I took it out of the bookshelf, look at this. It has one of these inserts. Now this is what you would find typically in notebooks, in journals. And I thought to myself, hmm, this is different. Uh, is it a journal? And it was also talking about reading and writing. And I looked inside it and I flicked through the pages and it intrigued me even further. What this was is it's a story by Hari Kunzru, but there's a whole heap of different graphics as well in it. Okay, so what ha had happened was this is actually part of a exhibition that happened at the Victoria and Albert Museum back in 2013 in the UK. And Hari was commissioned to write a story, which he wrote The Memory Palace, and then the museum actually encouraged various artists from, um, from the area, from the region, to basically write and, and create representations of his work. So they had read the, the work and created certain elements of it. And so <clears throat> what we see, and so what we see is I guess a different representation of the story by different people. It's curated by the museum and it gives us, I guess, different representations of memory. Now, the other thing I love at the back of the book is it's a story within a story. And I always like uh, those concepts. I like to understand how something was built. And so this one, Making Memory Palace by Robert Hunter, he has created the graphical elements and you read this, there's no words here, but as you look at the diagrams, you get an indication of how they made Memory Palace, the exhibition and the book. So you're reading it like a comic book, but there's no words, but then you can understand how the progression happened, how the process happened. And so this really intrigued me because I've never seen a book like it and I love this concept of being able to curate different people to think of what memory means to them. And so what is the book about? Well, effectively Kunzru has written a book about a time in the future where memory is discarded, where reading and writing is not allowed and that remembering the past is banned. Let me just read you the blurb. In a world where reading, writing, and remembering the past are banned, a group of renegade memorialists is all that stands in the face of total oblivion. Memory Palace is a work of original fiction by Hari Kunzru, the best-selling author of Gods Without Men, commissioned by the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. Memory Palace forms the basis for an innovative exhibition in partnership with Sky Arts Ignition that explores the relationship between the written word and the visual interpretation. This volume includes preliminary drawings by leading 20 leading typographers, illustrators and graphic designers whose work features in the exhibition alongside a contextual essay by the curators, Laurie Britta Newell and Ligaya Salazar and a graphic story by Robert Hunter. So this is a beautiful book and a story about where reading and writing is banned and so people have to rely on their memories. And it's a story of someone who gets caught up and is in prison and has to create a memory palace to 
share the memories that he had learned and to pass it on. Now, I want to show you, before I go into what a memory palace is, I want to show you some images of the actual exhibition. So this is an example of the exhibition of the typographers and the illustrators that read the book and then looked at what they could do to kind of put it in their own different context. So this was an example of the exhibition hall. And I must admit, I wasn't in London back in 2013, but this would have been quite fascinating to see the different renditions and different interpretations of the story and the book by the typographers. And so this is very different to uh, books that I have read because it, they haven't been integrated with different exhibitions, but it gives you a really great sense of the story. But most of all, what I loved about this story is that it gave me also some, I guess, information about what a memory palace is. Now, I don't know about you, but you probably would have heard about these people who can memorize all the digits after pi um, ad nauseum. You know, how do they how do they remember all these things they could without making lists or writing things down? Well, what they do is they create a memory palace and in a memory palace is an opportunity for you to think of a place, maybe a place that you know really well, a childhood home or the home that you are in now and you anchor certain memories to certain parts of the house and you do them in such fantastical ways that you start to remember it and then what happens is your brain starts to remember the storyline and you'd be amazed at how much you can pick up and I did try this for myself I took a deck of cards and I tried to memorize the deck of cards and then create this storyline of me going into my house and at different parts of the house picking up these the deck of cards and trying to memorize what they were doing just to try and see how much I could get through. I only got through to about 10 cards, but that's that's really good for me because usually I've got a memory like a sieve and it just kind of disappears. So putting that little uh, way of being able to remember things has been brilliant for me. So that is the memory palace. Now, the only thing I would say, if I was to improve this book, if the book is obviously all about memory and it's all about different representations of how different people read the book and what they created by it, and the fact that it looks like a notebook and the fact that the story was curated by a whole heap of different people, the only thing I would say that would have improved this book so much is by having some unlined paper at the end of it so that people who attended the exhibition were able to actually write or draw their own experiences of that exhibition. I think that would have been a great little, I guess, touch to close the circle when it comes to memory given that they've created the exhibition um, with the different typographers the illustrators the curators but that seems to have come from their place what has the people who attended the exhibition what did they get from it now i do understand that they did have a display where people could write and draw their own uh, sketches on it and you could see it on a big screen. But I would say, where is that? What about taking something away and actually bringing it with you? But ultimately, look, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. I love this book. I love the story and I love the concept of curating different ideas from different people to create a very interactive and an engaging piece of work, a piece of art, and a story. So that is it, The Memory Palace by Hari Kunzru. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching.